Jason, I don't know if you remember as a kid the saying goes April showers. Yeah. Okay. So you're struggling all month. <laughs> yeah, but we had all that rain in March. Well, this year we had it in March too, so it changed. Well, the new time. saying is February, March, and April showers. <laughs> January was the worst we've ever had. Oh, was it? Yes, January was the worst one we had on the record. Right Morning. 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 Yeah, they started. Yeah, yeah. We didn't start something. We don't start something like that. Uh, rain's, <coughs> rain's been a problem. Get games in. All that coming looks great. That's, that's, that's good. We actually had a scrimmage last night. So, yeah. That rain was perfect. God, we gather this morning in humility and thank you for your many blessings. We ask you for your guidance and strength. And on Saturday, we'll recognize and celebrate the birth of Lycoming County in 1795. It was created from part of Northumberland County and named for the Lycoming County Creek. And has grown over the years with its rich history that we're blessed to call home. We're thankful for our valley nestled in the mountains and its beauty. Lord, we'll celebrate and honor the Air Force reserves on their birthday is Sunday. Its mission is to provide combat-ready forces to fly, fight, and win. 
They play a crucial role in the Department of Defense. And these men and women answer the call of duty. We thank you for the over 70,000 reservists that serve our nation. Father, on Monday, we'll remember a time over three quarters of a century ago when a black man, who was also a veteran, had the courage of David to glide and walk onto a baseball field. Like David slayed the giant Goliath, Jackie Robinson slayed the color barrier that was instrumental in the early days of the Civil Rights Movement. He was threatened, spat upon, called names and isolated, but he kept his temper and tongue while silent when needed. He just demonstrated a pillar of strength as a result, and we thank you for his life and guided him through the, his days to help future generations. He was a cornerstone of change, and we celebrate his legacy. And we ask you to lead us this morning in our decisions. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Good morning. This time we'll convene the Commissioner's public meeting and ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Good morning. Did somebody just say something? No. Uh oh, okay. I will make a motion. I have a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. We have an addition or revision to the agenda not previously posted. Director? Yeah, Commissioner, seeking your approval to add action item 3.3 and move to uh, correction. Seeking your approval to remove salary board action item 3.3 and move it to personal action items. District Attorney requesting approval for special county detectives for Lycoming County Drug Task Force, DUI Roving Patrol, and DUI Center Patrol. Okay, can I have a motion on that first? Sure, I will make a motion. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And then a second one. Uh, seeking your approval to add a second bullet point to action item 7.4, reappointment of Daniel Clark, effective 1-1-23 to 12 27 Okay, can I have a motion to add the action item 7.4? I will make the motion. I'll second. All your side? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. At this time, um, do we have any public comment on agenda items only? Can I make a comment on yes. the prayer? You said our county's named after Lycoming Creek. Yes. Do, you, do we know what Lycoming Creek was named after? Is there is it a Native American? Do we? Hmm? Is that what it was? Larry, do we know that? Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. Since you did a little history dive, yeah, I just wondered okay. if you knew more. I'll we'll make a couple, couple comments during Commissioner's comments about that. Okay. And hopefully more people will explore the history. Okay. Um, do we have any public comments on agenda items only besides that? No, no, no. Okay. Hearing none, then reports. Kalen. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Presented for your ratification are invoices due for April 17, 2024, to be paid on April 10, 2024, in the amount of $2,422,115.65. The breakdown is as follows, with 17.46% being funded by the general fund at $422,877.23, Fifty-three point zero eight percent is being funded by pass-through monies and other grants at one million two hundred eighty-five thousand seven hundred thirty-seven dollars and sixty-two cents. Twenty-six point three nine percent is being funded by RMS at six hundred thirty-nine thousand one hundred fifty-four dollars and twenty-three cents, and three point zero seven percent is being funded by escrow at seventy-four thousand three hundred forty-six dollars and fifty-seven cents. I have a motion to accept the uh, accounts payable. I will make the motion. No, I'll second. Any questions or comments? No, if there are any, let's do it. Okay. And then all of your side? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you. Thank you. She's staying now. She's not leaving. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. This is Jamie with Tucson. Good morning, Jamie. You're up. Awesome. So, the first thing I think we have on the agenda is the 2024 app rent schedule. So, we just wanted to make an announcement that those mailings are going out and the public notice will be published tomorrow. And the first public hearing and project development workshop will be May 7th at 6 p.m. there at the county building at the commissioner's room. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner. So we have Jamie Allen. Can we switch to? Would you like me to point? do the public hearing right now, or wait till I come up? Yes, yes, we're going to do that right now, so we don't hold you up. We'll recess the commission. Okay. We'll recess. Thank you, I appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll recess the commission's meeting for the community development block grant public hearing at this time. And move on to All six point right. zero. Thank you. Thank you. So for federal fiscal year funding 2021, the Southwind Port Borough has funding left over in the Habitat for Humanity Acquisition Phase 2 project, $41,956 that they would like to put into purchasing some equipment for North Central Site Services as their equipment is broken and they need no equipment to be able to continue to function and increase services primarily know they employ the uh, disabled the blind so we just need the to take time to get public comment on that modification if anybody has any comments or questions do we have any public comment at this time on them give them the money we have a gentleman in the audience that give them the money <laughs> awesome perfect all right so then when you reconvene your regular meeting we can take action to approve submitting that budget modification to DCD okay at this time we'll adjourn the public hearing and we'll move back and reconvene the commissioner's public meeting at this time thanks jamie thank you jamie you're welcome sure okay well, these are point yeah, yeah these are. okay so at this time we'll recess the commissioner's public meeting again for the salary board and we'll convene the salary board at this time we have anybody from the controller's office on the phone? Okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> controller requests, the controller requests uh, to vote to uh, table the salary board minutes of the previous meeting of April 4th, 2024. Okay. I have a motion to table. He made the motion or is he looking for it? He's looking for it. I'll vote. make the motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So that the meeting minutes from that date, April 4th, are tabled at this time. Okay. Uh, we'll adjourn the salary board this time. We'll be in the commissioner's public meeting. And we'll move on to personal actions. Okay. Jumping all over the place. Okay. Much like the Native American term for Sandy Shores or Sandy Creek for Lycoming County. Is that what it is? That's what it is. Really? No, no. Sandy Creek. You just Googled that. Whatever. <laughs> and that's my uh, since, he's, <laughs> since he's a native of here, he's no Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming from North Dakota <laughs> native. <laughs> this, this is North Dakota 101. We learned all the other states first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, request the uh, approval of the approve the following personnel actions as conditional offers of employment uh, subject to the successful completion a background check and all other employment conditions as outlined in attachment A. Uh, for financial management, Brian Ciotti, uh, financial ana analyst, full-time replacement, $47,153.34 per year. That's a 75-hour pay period with an anticipated start date of April 15th. 2024. Uh, financial management, Heather Lehman, Chief Budget Officer, full-time replacement. That's a salary of $74,274.41 per year, 75 hours per pay period, anticipated transfer date of April 14th, 2024. In the pre-release center, Sarah Verostro, Resident Supervisor 1, full-time replacement, 1864 per hour, 
80 hours per pay period with an anticipated start date, April 15, 2024. In the Adult Probation Office, uh, Kennedy Barr, Ad Adult Probation Officer 2, that's a full-time replacement of 47 per hour, 80 hours per pay period with an anticipated effective date of April 28, 2024. And then as moved, uh, the District Attorney's Office requesting approval for special county detectives for the Lycoming County Drug Task Force, DUI Roving Patrol, and the DUI Center Patrol. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion for personal actions? I will make the motion. I'll second it. Is there any questions or comments? On any of them? Um, are the, under the District Attorney, are these new positions or they no. were existing positions? They're, they're existing positions on the TDA. Okay. And so it's approving uh, the personnel to, to fill the duties of those positions. Okay. Uh, they're just not named based on that. Right. Okay. So we don't have anybody slated for these positions yet. They're just. They're, they're part time positions and, and, and they gonna fill look. time slots. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other side? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, we move on nationally. 7.0. 7.1 now. I think we took time. Yes. So 7.2. So we're at 7.1 GS to vote and approve. Oh, okay. so yeah, you have to vote and approve yeah, okay. it. So Jamie, Jamie, you're still on the phone? I got Okay. Commissioner is seeking your approval on the submission of the CDBG at the FY21 budget modification certification in the amount of $41,956. These are 2021 CDBG bonds. And that's what she was just addressing on yep. the phone. Okay. Can I, have a motion? I have a motion. I will make the motion. I'll second. All fair side. Aye. 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 7, 2, 3, Maya. Good morning, Maya. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Glad to see you're not sick. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too, since he's so nice to me. It was news to him. Um, the first time I, I have for you day off. is a vote, <laughs> to, <laughs> a vote to approve um, Blake Marks counsel to Lepley, Engelman, Yaw, and um, Welk attorneys at law in the amount of $45,000. Um, this is for the district attorney's office for special legal services, uh, specifically to the juvenile um, cases that he has. Um, by formal court. Okay. Uh, I have a motion. I will make the motion. I'll second. All here side? Aye. 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 The next item I have for you is vote to approve Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, known as PCCD, for the sub grant award notification in the amount of $111,000, um, 514, $111,546. Um, this is actually a new grant. This is that grant that I found earlier last year that some COVID monies um, that we could use for our prisons. So um, it's taken a long time, but we're finally there. We finally got awarded. So we'll be starting to expend that and working. I'll be working directly with the prison to expend you know, those funds. But um, it's an array of things between supplies um, to in installation of new um, fans for circulation out there. So it's a wide variety of uh, things that we'll be purchasing out there. Thank you. And this is a great example of uh, you know, our procurement <coughs> office um, doing what they do best, is going out and paying grants. And, um, you know, like she says, this takes care of supplies that otherwise taxpayers would be paying Correct. for. Mm -hmm. And we get these grants from your efforts and your staff's efforts and, and other department heads that look for grants. Uh, we know we have a big county budget, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of that money comes through through grants. And uh, if, if we didn't obtain those grants, they would go some other place. That is Either correct. Be, yeah. you know, somewhere else in the state or somewhere nationally, and someone else would be utilizing those, those federal and state dollars. And so we're thankful we have staff here and, your, and you in your office. So we want to thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, I have a motion. I will make the motion. I'll second. All fair side? Aye. Aye. All right. That's Good it. work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, 7.4, Commissioner seeking uh, your approval to appoint and reappoint the following individuals to the Lycoming County Authority. Uh, appoint Steve Johnson, effective 1124 to 123128, and then the reappointment 
of Daniel Clark, effective 1-1-23 to 12-31-27. Okay, I have a motion. I will make the motion. I'll second. And we want to thank both these gentlemen for uh, taking their time and volunteering for these boards. Um, <coughs> they're so crucial in our county. So thank you uh, again for these gentlemen volunteering and all the volunteers who serve on the various boards that assist Lake County County. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Seven five three seven seven. Jason. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, director. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, first item for your approval seven point five. This is the resolution twenty twenty four zero four for the commercial line of credit with Citizens Northern Bank in the amount of forty million dollars. As we presented to you uh, with CNN Bank uh, back in January, what you're finally approving today is the actual resolution where we've got all the I's dot and the T's crossed and all the paperwork's ready to get submitted. So and for you is the actual resolution for the $40 million. Okay. No motion? I will make the motion. I'll second it. All favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Commissioner 7.6. This is vote to approve the purchase of a new 2024 D6 um, dozer with Cleveland Brothers in the amount of $552,550. This is a budget item. This will be replacing a 2016 D6T that we use in our waste with the D8. Um, this with the co-stars and the buybacks and everything. So, Jason, your approval. Jason, this says 2017 on the. Yes, that's. I just today I, I didn't think I was right. I think it's. I looked at it as 2016, sir. But okay. either way, it's it's got almost now it has almost 9,000 hours on. By the time we get the new one in, we'll we'll hit that. Sweet spot where we got to put an undercarriage in again, and invest money or get a new one. So that's why we're, we try to rotate this out. This is a half a million dollars, and, and uh, is 9,000 hours that long on a machine like that? I mean, in the waste of this, sir. We've already put one undercarriage on it, and we'll do to put We had, if you recall, we had tried to rebuild the D8s that we put in the waste, and it turned out we were upside down on them. What did we get to trade in for that one? Uh, we got 100 and Fifteen thousand dollars. Could we have got more if we sold it outright? I don't believe so. The, in the, the the attempt to move it outright, we typically move better through the equipment dealers. Your township used to do this. What do you yeah, I, I would, you know, politely disagree with with that. I think that, and and Maya and I have talked about it, and and. We wouldn't put this on, on the RMS task to do. We'd put that on the financial management's task to do. But I think um, I'd like to try doing some indice bid and see if we can get higher numbers. Yeah. Um, we, we always did a lot of stock. We got way more than the trade-in value. Obviously, the trade-in value, they're, they're buying it to sure, resell it. Yeah. Where if you do indice bids, you could possibly get another county or another landfill um, that needs it that would pay us more. So. I mean, I have no problem trading this one in, but I think as we move forward, that's something we need to have Maya's team look at. Okay, I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. I want to change this particular deal. Okay. All right, any, you have any questions? Nope. I'm good. Okay. I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All fair side? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner 7 7 is approved the purchase of the 2025 Kenworth T4E. 480 curbside recycling truck from Kenworth, the amount of $285,443. This is through Kenworth, this will be the truck chassis, and then they'll be pulling in the package, the collection system that they'll mount on the back of it uh, that I showed you about. So this is, as curbside, we're, recycled, we're mandated to recycle in three of the communities, uh, Williamsport, South Williamsport, and Little Sock. So we provide curbside recycling on Wednesdays. This truck will apply to the 9010 split grant, the 902 as we call it, the equipment grant. So if you look back at your check run that you had this morning, you saw a significant amount of money that we paid out to the state, to Brady Township, and so forth. So the funds that we we have to pay so much money per ton of waste to the state. Actually total seven and a quarter comes off of our fees and goes out to Brady Township at $1.30 uh, in the state, it's the rest. 
broken up, and two dollars of it goes to the recycling grant. And we are allowed to apply for the 902 that when it comes available, and it's a 9010 grant. So ultimately, when this is said and done, we'll only have twenty eight thousand dollars, but twenty eight thousand five hundred basically in it after we get the grants approval. So we will the next round we will be putting that for the approval. But it is replacing a two thousand and seven. Uh, as we refer to as R24, curbside recycling truck that is beyond repair. Have you applied for this grant in the past? Oh, we apply for it every time, sir. We Have do. We, we get this grant uh, all the time. Every All municipalities that put into the 902 usually get it. You you will always get the same amount. Like this year, I think it's 200000 Some years, it's 350000 that's available per unit. Um, so they, they target uh, all recycling efforts or municipalities that need leaf, waste, trucks, stuff like that. So it's always available. Have we ever been denied the amount or has it been reduced to maybe 15% instead of Well, 90? the year that the state was gonna to try to take $90 million out of the account, they upped it to 350,000 per person, per application. So it depends on what pressure is, it seems, um, how much is available. Typically it's 200 to 300,000, 350,000. Okay. So even if we, like, we can apply for several items. So the current one that you'll see for 200,000 is gonna have parts for single stream and we, we can, any expense we put through recycle is eligible for the 90-10 split. So we always have a running list of items we can put through. So yeah, we've, we've always received it. Okay, thank you. If, if um, say you only put 50,000 towards the purchase of this truck out of the, the current grant application, then the, the next grant application, you can put yes. more towards the balance of the purchase price. Yeah, you can you can <coughs> split it up however the grants go. That's a good point, from, uh, Director McGurk. Appreciate that. Yeah, it it will always be eligible. And then once it's expensed, then we put a sticker on it that says this has been funded through 902 grant. And then 10, 15 years down the road, if we ever go to sell it, trade it in, do whatever, you then have to submit a letter to back to DEP that here's the truck or the piece of equipment, here's the value, current value, then they typically ask you to put the money that you get from that machine back into your program. So there's a tracking system with everything we have grant funded. I would add to this too, just for um, everybody and the, the other commissioners and the public. So we had uh, at our monthly meeting for um, the recycle or for the resource management services, uh, we had a conversation of the, you know, how much is this truck utilized, or how much are these trucks utilized? And uh, because I know when the program first came out, as, as uh, Mr. Yorks told me, we had a lot more routes. We've reduced those routes um, to where we're mandated to have the routes. Um, but the value is really with our elderly residents because they can still put that container out and someone comes and gets it, as opposed to the, you know, the rest of us that are running to all the different recycle areas, which we have available to everybody. But this is such an asset to our our elderly people, and they they really do utilize it. Thank you. Our seniors, our seniors, our healthy living of oh, yeah. <laughs> our seniors like me. <laughs> Could you feel the solicitor glaring at him when he said that? <laughs> when I said when he said that. <laughs> so, and, and just for emphasis, the ninety ten grants we put in ten, they put in nine. Not the other we typically ones. pay up front, sir. We'll yeah. pay the amount, and then we get the reimbursement. So you know, it's not like ten percent off. It's like ninety percent. Yeah, ninety percent. So it is a deal. But it's always typically behind. Once you've bought the product, then we have the receipts. We submit all that for. Right. That's the math teacher in them. Yep. As it was when I first heard ninety ten, I just assumed you know you don't see coupons that are ninety percent off. You see them ten percent off. So the ninety ten grant when we realized that we were putting in ten and they were putting in ninety. It's a it's if, a good deal. If you see what we submit quarterly to the state, it's awfully kind of. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Okay, thank you. A motion? I will make the motion. I'll second. On fair side. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. 7.8, Kenny. Morning, Kim. Morning, freshers. Um, before you today is a, um, a credit, which we don't get to do too often, but um, is a change order with Selznick um, Electric um, in the amount of $52,300. Um, so 
a refund on the license. Okay, we'll be glad to uh, take a motion for that. I will make the motion. I'll second. I'll fear side. Aye. Thank you, Ken. Does anyone working on it? Does anyone have a vote against it? Yeah. Does anyone have a vote against the credit for fifty-two thousand dollars? Does this have to do with the third street plaza? Yes, it does. Is that the third, third floor? Yeah, we'll rechange the lighting now. Yes, and uh, and you brought that to our attention. Yes, we did. And uh, and we said, listen, um, we don't want anything elaborate. We don't want anything different than the employees. And make sure it's in, in uh, the same same format. And that's what they did, and saved us some money. It, it, you know, Didn't you also say it's more energy efficient? No, yeah, too. More energy, yeah. So it's not like just a time. it's a upfront savings. But it's a perpetual saving, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. On the electric bill, because yeah. those lights would have used, uh, used an equivalent to three floors? Uh, yeah, we're saving uh, roughly, rough numbers, but roughly 416 fixtures. Good. Um, and I think we're using 100 and some on the entire floor. So we've got that many, uh, that much in energy out. It's great. I went earlier yesterday to look at it, and it's nice to see are these the same as uniformed. We don't need anything elaborate uh, or different than employees. I, I think they look nice. I like the, yeah, they do. the glow from the lights instead of the, the reflection. It's more it's more of a softer, to yeah. me, it's more of a softer even light. Yeah. Great. Now, this was a really good catch on your part. We thank you for that. Thank you so much, Ken. You're very welcome. Thank you for bringing your attention. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, motion and second on that. On their side? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Conner. Uh, as noted earlier in our prayer, uh, Saturday is like Cumming County's birthday. It was created in 1795. We we urge the public to research the history of our county. It's, it's tremendous as I look through some of it. Uh, how each borough and, and the townships were, were developed and created and named. And, and it's good to hear what our forefathers did in this county and, and uh, some of the struggles that went on. Um, you know, for instance, the county seat with Williamsport. You know, initially they wanted up in Jaysburg and Newberry, yeah. and there was a, a kind of a conflict going back and forth between the two, and where the county seat was going to be at. And uh, so it was interesting reading it. So we urge the public to read into our, our history, and we're blessed to live here. Anything? Yeah, I just, as you mentioned, um, Jackie Robinson Day, which is. It's always on tax day too, which doesn't seem to be fair because it's like a, it's a terrible day and it's a celebratory day. But um, when you watch uh, the movie, if you watch Forty Two, if you haven't watched Forty Two, you should. Um, it, it, one of the things it reminds us we talk about um, the courage of Jackie Robinson, um, but it also kind of reminds us that the the courage of the people in power to um, to help make change for for the groups that are being oppressed. Um, the Branch Rickies of the world, the Pee Wee Reese's of the world, who are instrumental in in making this change come about, and it is, um, and we, we need to keep this in mind when we're, we're dealing with, um, you know, we live in a world that still seems to be mostly run by old white men, and when we're dealing with women's rights and LGBTQ rights and and social justice all across the map, to to keep in mind that the that the people who can really orchestrate change. Um, and when you watch it again, the, the vision and the courage of, of the people, not just Jackie Robinson, but his teammates and the people with the Dodgers that really, um, that made this happen and helped it happen. And, and to remind ourselves what role we have in society um, to help those who are being oppressed even today. Mark Dahlman thought the colored leader that existed in baseball at the time between the separation of whites and colors and what Jackie Robinson had to go through. Yeah, I mean the, the history of the Negro Leagues. There's a there's a Negro League Hall of Fame actually in Kansas City, um, and it just you know it was it exemplified the times and um, and it was you know it was it was a hard time and it was when you the, the, the not just the, the wisdom of Branch Rickey to to as he said to pick the right person because Jackie Robinson was a very good player but he wasn't the best player in the Negro Leagues, but he was UCLA educated. He had served in the military. Um, that he he thought he knew was going to be tough on a lot of people, especially Jackie, and um, he found the the right guy that he thought could make it work. And uh, it is it's certainly a, a 
even if you don't like baseball, which I don't know, how could anyone not like baseball? Um, it, the historical uh, telling of it is is really it's a uh, it's a it's a very important piece of American history, and uh, it's just forty two. It's just a number forty two. Very tricky. Was the, the owner of the Dodgers, and he had to find the right the right man to fit that role, and the man that had the temperament because he knew what he was going to go through. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was the Brooklyn Dodgers, not the LA Dodgers. Yeah. Yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. yep. And uh, and he sat him down. He put him through a very tough interview at the time. And and Jackie's thinking, does this guy want me or doesn't he? He's more or less attacking me. And he basically said, say to him, this is what you're going to experience. And you know, you're going to have to to mind your tongue. And, and but after he gave him basically after two years, when you prove to them that you're capable of playing on their level, then you can take those people out behind the woodshed. And take care of him, mm -hmm. and uh, and so he did. He, he was, uh, and he broke that barrier, which is, is tremendous for today. And we thank him and his legacy for it, because he went through a lot, and his family. His family went through a, a terrible time. And I, I think it also showed how, um, because it was like everyone was not welcoming. And unfortunately for us, the, the guy in the movie was from Philadelphia. That was uh, the manager from Philadelphia that was worse to him. But um, uh, once. They had the courage to break it. He won Rookie of the Year, and then uh, that was voted on, obviously by a, a pool of white reporters. And so it, it did not it did not take long for for people to be embraced once they had um, the courage to to just say it was okay that they could play. So um, yeah, it was just it's an important time, and I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up today. The owner of the Phillies at that time, I believe, was Con and coach was Connie Mack. No, he wasn't the coach because it he was not a coach. Genre, he yeah, he might have been the owner. owner. Yeah. Um, I can't think of the guy's name. Yeah. I can see him. I can see him too. He the one gets picture taken with him. Right. Um, another historical day that just happened last Monday, April eighth, which it, it, again shows the the discrimination that was going on back in the forties, fifties, sixties, went all the way up through the seventies. Was uh, fifty years ago, um, Aaron broke uh, Babe Ruth's uh, record. Home run record, and uh, and Babe had, or I'm sorry, Hank had tied it, and he had to go through the whole winter before it was broken on April 8th, and the death threats that, that man received, and, and I mean you have a a, a black a gentleman who's from the South, he's from a, you know playing Atlanta, and the, what he experienced, especially during that winter, the death threats he had, the FBI had to sign a, a, an agent to him to make sure he was protected, and he was so relieved when he broke that record. You know, it was it was he was just relieved that it was over with, and it's sad because he should have been able to be able to celebrate it the way he should have been celebrated, and and uh, instead of having the feelings of being relieved that it was over with, uh, it was unfortunate. But we've come so far from them; we still have a long ways to go. But at the same time, it was uh, it was a special time in history. So. When you said April, I thought you were tying this into the eclipse somehow. I, April, I didn't know where you were going. With that. April, eight, fifty years ago on Monday. And they were actually playing the Dodgers. The Braves were playing the Dodgers that day. Oh, was in Atlanta. It was in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta and they were playing the Dodgers. So. Okay, do we have anything from uh, the public and the audience? Mr. Stout. Larry Stout here as um, not just uh, well, weekly, but um, it's the Montgomery Area Historical Society president, so I'm going to bring some light according to, what is it, um, chat GPT, okay? Correct that it was the name Sandy Creek, but it was in the um, Lenape Indian uh, language, it's La Comic, and it's like coming, it's sort of, so that's why, it, and, uh, but now as I began to think about that, it reminded me, and in this, it's the 1790, was 1795, that? 1795. Yeah. 1795. There was a, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning writer by the name of Conrad Richter, who wrote a book about those Indians in the Pennsylvania area, and the story was a, it was set in 19, or 1760, of a, uh, boy that was captured as a young child, and then there was now the Indians and the settlers were decided, okay, we're gonna we're gonna live nicely, so we're gonna trade back 
And so the story is how this this boy is in his teenage years and he and he doesn't know what he is. He's back with the family, but he doesn't fit there. He, he but the Indians don't want him either. You know, that, so he, he he's struggling with this. It became a, a it was called Light in the Darkness or Light in the Forest, and it was a, a Disney movie. They uh, 1952, I think they made it 53. Uh, it was a Nobel Prize. I mean, he didn't win a Nobel. He won a Pulitzer Prize, but uh, this was it was in Reader's Digest. You know, it was in it was quite popular in the '60s. We all had to read it. The author Conrad Richter was lived in this area. He actually had brothers that graduated from Montgomery High School. Uh, he um, uh, actually became a writer because he came to this area as a teenager. He had been living out in Pittsburgh. He got graduated from school in Grove uh, City somewhere, uh, somewhere, but anyway, his father became the pastor of Christ Lutheran Church, which was we know it now as the Stone Church. Um, he was pastor there. This guy just was, was literally having a, a meltdown, came back, and he walked around he just spent, you know, days and days just walking in the forest and met some, uh, you know, Native Americans and uh, met the settlers and just found this. And he started to write. He wrote more for his own mental case. But anyway, so um, we have a connection in a sense with uh, with um, our our anniversary of what 1790. But it also has, I think, in the name. Thank you for mentioning that and, and bringing it in. And it, it's, it, the book itself, uh, Light in the Darkness, it's, it's really a good read. Um, it's in Spark Notes, it's in you know, all those if you want to cheat. Uh, when did he write it? He wrote it in 1953. He wrote it. The Disney movie is in 1958. Um, and by the way, um, Jackie Robinson made a movie it was in 1950. It was called the Jackie Robinson yeah. story. story, and well, this he one played bad. himself. Yeah, it wasn't very good. I admit it. it was, but uh, <laughs> but uh, he, he himself. Yeah, if you want to see the real Jackie Robinson, he was there. So anyway, thank so you. So the name of the book is Light in the Darkness. Light in the Darkness. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we are. I mean, just this. We give a. Uh, we give a. Um, every year we give a, a scholarship there in our uh, historical society, and we're kicking around. Uh, making that requirement, like read it and relate it to, because personally I think, it, I've even uh, tried to get talk to some publishers, that I think it ought to be reprinted because I think the, the identity problems of that uh, young man actually relate very much to today. Uh, he didn't know what he was and he was struggling to try and figure out where do I fit? And uh, I, I think uh, Richter had really had some insights through all that. So. Do you know how old Montgomery High School is? Do you know when they... 1905 That's when it started. Yep, yep, we go way back. So. My dad yeah. graduated from there. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to graduate. They, it was more like they picked me out. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you, Larry. Thank you. We have any other public comment this time? While he's coming up, I also yeah. want to say, Hank Morning. Aaron, you can come up. I'm just talking while you're coming up. Uh, Hank Aaron was a way better hitter than he ever gets credit for. The best player there ever was was Roberto Clemente. Well, he was good. But when they he talk about, the best. when you look at, at Hank Aaron's hitting stats, he did a lot yeah, more than hitting yeah. runs. He was a way better player than he's ever given credit for. Good morning. I'd like to thank John Sharm and Jersey Shore. I'd like to thank the commissioners two weeks ago for the uh, citation or paper in recognition of the Vietnam veterans. Citation, yes. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for your service, John. Well, that's new here and there. Uh, I've, been, I've watched the ceremonies for the last two years, and my comments are not my, aimed at the uh, county commissioners, but uh, the local VA representative that runs the VA office here in Lycoming County, both times has been here for the Vietnam Veterans Day recognition, but has ignored the big elephant in the room which I did with the present I did with the presentation on the Agent Orange last year, and that is the biggest problem that has um, like veterans coming back 
from Vietnam over the years, who many come back to this, although those 60,000 died, they come back uh, in co coffins, and I knew two of them, Joe Mazzocco, and uh, Danny Eaker, who come from the, the South Sport, the Boys Town area that I grew up with. Uh, but a lot more veterans come back suffering from Agent Orange effects, and, and with the effects of that, I've killed a lot more veterans, Vietnam veterans, and there are over, they use 20,000 or 20 million gallons in Vietnam. Anything could cross it from a diabetes to um, most everything. And I'm just talking about Vietnam veterans today, but the burn pits and the things like that. But he should know that um, people coming back had varying, varying degrees of success and failures in their lives. And not everyone was, uh, quote, business people, teachers, and professionals. With it. And um, what I find most disappointing is that some people um, um, when, you, when you present information like I did and you approach local people to publish this as I wanted to last year, um, they wouldn't do it. But typical example is a reporter sitting back here that's for a local, a local weekly. I give him the information last year from the VA and everything else. And I went to the owner of that publication also, oh, we'll do something about it. Not a word. But yet the gentleman back here can write columns and everything else, own personal praise and everything else, patent stuff on the back. But when it comes to VA with the Asian Orange, a lot of it gets swept under the carpet. I had a conversation with a girl when I was buying shoes last week. And she asked me if I wanted to round the price up for um, for cancer funds. I said, yeah. I said, you know, not, we got to talking. And I said, my wife died of some cancer, but I went through, I'm the lucky one, I can't figure things out. And she started welling up and crying a little bit, come to her glass, come to her tears, come to her eyes. And she said, yeah, my mother's stepson, or stepfather, he, he died of leukemia because he was a Vietnam veteran and got exposed to age and orange. You know, so it is time that VA locally here, when that man is up here, then he should know, 72 years old, what the big problem is. I'm not interested, and a lot of people aren't about vacation to Vietnam with things. We know that we know the problems of the PS post-traumatic syndrome and all that, but the big elephant in the room has been the lack by the VA here to rep to bring out what the ravages of what Vietnam veterans have had to go through, dying an early death and, and everything like that. I'm one of the lucky ones. I, only, I can't, could never produce any children, but, but I served in Vietnam. I handled, everybody who handled it in Vietnam and were exposed to it. 20 million gallons was used. Over a million and a quarter Vietnamese people died because of the, being exposed to the these defoliants, as they call them. Our own government parties are always in our own service people with everything. But for that VA representative to not bring up two years in a row in a meeting like this that's devoted to Vietnam Veterans Day and ignore the big elephant in the room, shame on him. He owes an apology to every 3,000 veterans like myself, ignoring it. I go up to Clinton County because I like it much better up there. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Any other public comment at this time? Anything online? Yep. Um, okay. These are all from Thomas Adams. Good morning, commissioners. I hate to miss your meeting in person, but I sure do appreciate the live feed and the opportunity to comment. I would like to thank Commissioner Messina for his involvement with the crisis training program for public services, especially first responders, especially law enforcement. I understand people who don't understand mental health issues can be dismissing of such a program. As I shared in the past meetings, I know of a young man who suffers with the inability to discern imagined dangers from reality. Fortunately, where he lives, law enforcement is trained in very caring along with other first responders and public servants. 
I thank all of you for your dedication to our county <clears throat> and communities. Also, the dedication of our local public servants is fantastic. The character of our service services workers starts from the top. I appreciate the hearts of love and care displayed throughout the county is a model for our state and nation. <coughs> Excuse me. And then from Harper Will Try. Thank you, Commissioner Mucina, for advocating for marginalized groups. Here's to more Americans realizing woke is not a just is not just a pejorative term, and social justice is a laudable goal for a society. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I did. I wanted to just piggyback on what Tom just said about. Um, they just had a, a week long class for first responders, and it was um, it was it was there were police there, there were. Um, paramedics there, there were probation people there. And what they were training them for was to recognize mental health crises in the field. And when we, when we watch on TV, we see when the ambulance shows up, it was because of a car accident or something like that. And when the police show up, it's because they're apprehending criminals, um, because that's how it works in, on the movies. And, you know. But there's lots of times that these people arrive and someone is having a, a mental health crisis that's of no fault of their own and where they, they don't need incarcerated, they don't need handcuffed and thrown in and charged, that they just need help. And it's um, by no fault of their own. It is, you know, whether they're schizophrenic or whether they're, you know, whether it's paranoia or whatever the case may be. So um, this, this training was offered and there were a bunch of people and it wasn't just like Cumming County people, it was in Clinton County as well. And uh, just the, the uh, ability for these people to recognize in the field uh, where when these people are uh, just need help as opposed to need you know criminally detained and um, because their first job is obviously to for the safety of, of our society uh, but then they're they're trying to protect these people as well who sometimes just need help and uh, it would it's a, a it was a wonderful program that these that was put on uh, the train it was it was just like a class schedule they went through um, multiple different variations and um, it's just good that we're, we're recognizing that more and helping yeah. these people who need help. It's a continuation of uh, the uh, mental health first aid training that was provided for years uh, to the law enforcement probation staff over the years. Uh, it kind of uh, subsided when COVID was here, obviously, and now it's picked back up and, and West Branch has uh, taken the lead on it and has, has grown with it, bringing more uh, more into it, so it's a week long training. I believe it's a week long. I think it yeah, it was a week long. Yeah, before it was two days, and uh, so it's it's a fantastic training. It helps um, those professionals to recognize the signs in the field, so that things don't escalate, and you can get the individual to help that they need. Yes, and I just got an alert on my phone that O.J. Simpson just passed. So mm -hmm. You're next twenty four hours. Yes, you will. Okay, we have completed our agenda, so our next meeting will be Thursday, April 18th, 2024. Thank you. I feel a little bit like Howard Cosell announcing to the world of John. Hey,